Natalie Wood had an incredibly impressive run in show business. For 40 plus years, she starred in a whole slew of silver screen classics. She took in three Golden Globes, was nominated for three Oscars, and had some steamy romances that were the envy of Hollywood. Outside her professional life, she was an outspoken advocate for mental health, women's rights, and LGBTQ equality. She also managed to successfully make the jump from film to television, a feat that was hard to pull off in the day. She was a bit of a fireball. She pushed back against the patriarchal misogyny that was prevalent in Hollywood at the time and demanded actresses receive equal pay to their male counterparts. She truly was ahead of her time in so many ways. But all that seems to be overshadowed by the mysterious circumstances surrounding her untimely death on November 28, 1981. While on an evening outing on a yacht with her fellow co-stars from the film Brainstorm, namely Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken, and the captain of the vessel, Dennis Davern, Woods went missing, only to be found dead a mile away near California's Catalina Island. Both Captain Davern and Natalie's sister, Lana Wood, both believe Robert Wagner played a role in her drowning, but he has persisted for decades in upholding his innocence. Stay tuned to find out if his story really adds up. Something definitely seems fishy about the whole thing. Wood's daughter believes her stepfather's story. Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind, is a documentary produced by Natalie's daughter, Natasha Gregson Wagner, and was released in May of 2020. In the film, Natasha made an attempt to put the obsession with her mother's death to rest by painting a detailed picture of her life's accomplishments, intimate relationships, and her commitment to her work. But despite the fact she tried to shy away from focusing on her death, it's obviously a subject that can't be overlooked. It's a part of her story, and the mystery remains. In the documentary, Natasha interviews her 90-year-old stepdad about the night her mother went missing and drowned. He gave his side of the story and insisted he was completely innocent when it came to having anything to do with her death. It became clear the film was produced in part to clear Wagner's name. Regardless of whether he killed her or not, which we'll take a closer look at in a second, it's incredible how Natalie's death still raises so many questions. Even 40 years after her passing, it's fascinating the public is still so intrigued by her demise. What is it about her final curtain call that sets it apart from all the other inexplicable celebrity deaths that have happened over the years? There's nothing like a real-world mystery. Just look at Elvis Presley, Princess Diana, Michael Jackson, and Kurt Cobain and see how the questions that their deaths have raised have resonated with fans for years after they took their final breaths. But even those deaths can hardly be called mysterious. Sure, they leave us with some gaps in our knowledge that leaves plenty of room for conspiracy theories and such, but for the most part, we know how, why, and when they died. Natalie's death, on the other hand, leaves us with a lot more to speculate about. The circumstances surrounding her life are troubling indeed, and the basics of how and why she died are still called into question. What we do know is that she drowned, but we don't still understand how she entered the water in the first place. Did she slip and fall in? Was she shoved? Did someone intentionally drown her? Her autopsy revealed she had bruises and abrasions all over her body, and it's never been determined where those marks came from, or who might have inflicted them on her. Was there some kind of struggle? When so many questions are left open, it's in our nature to try and fill in the gaps with speculation, wild guesses, and accusatory supposition. We love to point the finger. Over time, new info has come to light that has shifted the way we look at our death. We can't simply assume we know for a matter of fact what happened, especially when you consider what happened in 2011. Captain Davern's New Testimony The captain of the Splendor, Dennis Davern, made a shocking claim in 2011 on the Today Show. He revealed that on the evening of Wood's disappearance, he heard Robert Wagner and Natalie arguing. He also revealed he initially lied to the police in his first report. During that interview, he also made the assertion he thinks Wagner was directly responsible for Wood's death. Additionally, a woman by the name of Marilyn Wayne also came forward and testified that she, her son, and her partner at the time were on another boat that evening, roughly 120 feet away from the Splendor. They were sound asleep when they were jolted awake by the sound of a woman crying for help. They tried to spot the woman themselves, but they couldn't see anything. They also tried to contact the Harbor Patrol, but with no luck. Wayne further asserts she heard a man's voice, who sounded aggravated, say, Hold on, we're coming to get you. According to Wayne, after about 15 minutes, the cries for help went quiet. The couple then returned to bed, exceptionally distressed by what they had just heard. Wayne claims investigators never questioned her about what she and her boyfriend had witnessed, and that several days after the incident, she received a message on a ripped piece of paper that essentially said if she valued her life, she should keep quiet. Granted, it's odd Miss Wayne waited so long to come forward with what she knows. The plot thickens and the police amend the case. 
In 2018, after several new witnesses came forward with new information in the case, the L.A. coroner's office officially amended the cause of Natalie's death. While initially it was deemed an accidental drowning, they now consider it to be drowning with other undetermined factors. The police now view her death to be suspicious, and Robert Wagner is now considered a person of interest. Although it should be noted, he hasn't been called a suspect as of yet. More unanswered questions. When taking a look back at Natalie's life, peculiar and unusual coincidences raise more eyebrows about the mystery surrounding her death. According to The New Yorker, Miss Wood's mother once visited a psychic who told her her daughter would die in, quote, dark water. If that's not a spooky detail that sounds like something straight out of a mystery novel, we don't know what is. Wood had always been afraid of water. She told The New York Times she was absolutely terrified of what she called dark water and seawater. Another weird coincidence happened on the set of the 1964 film Sex and the Single Girl, where Wood had a scene where she had to save Tony Curtis from drowning. There's some old footage which shows her stepping into the water assisted by trained divers. Although it wasn't captured on camera, apparently when she came up for air, she was freaking out and could hardly be consoled. Wood's prolific career spanned generations. One of Natalie Wood's early notable credits was in the film Rebel Without a Cause. Her co-star, James Dean, would die in a horrific car crash that same year at the age of 24. Celebrities who die young hold a special legacy in our culture. Member of the so-called 27 Club, like Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison, who all died at the age of 27, have inspired generations of fans to be fascinated with their lives and works, which almost seem to be suspended in time. When someone dies so young, they end up being more famous posthumously than when they were alive. James Dean only ever starred in eight films, but he'll always represent the very paradigm of what was considered cool in the 50s. Morrison, Hendrix, and Joplin will likewise always be synonymous with the peace and love generation's psychedelic sound, despite the fact they had only released a handful of albums before their deaths. Natalie Wood's career started as a child actress back in 1943 in the film The Moon is Dawn. In 1947, when she was only eight years old, she got her first big break in Miracle on 34th Street. From there, she had a regular part in the cast of the TV sitcom The Pride of the Family in 1953. After that, she starred in Rebel Without a Cause, which earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. In 1961, she starred in the classic musical West Side Story, and also that year, she earned herself an Oscar nod for Splendor in the Grass. She'd get another nomination in 1963 for Love with the Proper Stranger. She'd make her adult return to TV in 1979 in the miniseries From Here to Eternity. Her last film before she died was the 1983 sci-fi thriller Brainstorm. Of course, that's not an exhaustive list. In total, she had 74 credits to her name. Fans got to see Natalie at various life stages during her four-decade-long career. As such, she was able to reach multiple generations of audiences. What Walken and Psychology Have to Say Christopher Walken has infamously kept quiet about Wood's demise. Seeing he was only one of three people to be on the boat when the incident happened, you'd think he probably knows more than he lets on. He hasn't been completely silent about the matter, though. He told Playboy in 1997 he was under the impression that she had slipped on the jet ski ramp that was partially submerged in the water. He assumes she probably hit her head as she fell, which likely contributed to her drowning. People die in untimely ways all the time. They trip and fall in their kitchens, they step into traffic and get hit by buses, they fall down flights of stairs. That's one of the reasons why there's still so much mystery behind Wood's death. People simply don't want to believe she died in such a simple and unremarkable way. It's a lot more interesting to assume that bad actors were involved. Some villainous scoundrel somehow had something to do with her death. Psychologists also propose other explanation for the public obsession. Perhaps our fascination with her death boils down to our universal and fundamental human fear of mortality. Or maybe we get a kind of thrill out of getting close to something that seems dangerous without actually ever being in a state of danger ourselves. Regardless of that, we may never fully know what happened to Natalie Wood. But what do you think? Do you think she was murdered by Robert Wagner? Or do you think she simply slipped and fell into the water? Let us know what your theories are down in the comments section. And before you go, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you can catch all of our latest videos.